I think, you know, one of my great friends who was Roland Barthes, uh, the, died with uh, the remorse that he, he didn't write a novel. And he was wrong because all his essays were narratively fantastic and beautiful. Okay. On the contrary, I realized that even though I started writing novels at the, for the age of 48, I was always narrating. Even my, my academic papers had the form of a narration. So I satisfied the sort of narrative impulse in two ways, by giving a narrative form to my researches and telling story to my children. Then probably I started writing a real novel when my children were too old <laughs> to, to, to listen to my stories. I always had this pleasure in telling story. Maybe they were jokes. Huh? Then when I was students, I wrote the many texts for um, musicals. Uh, so it was another way to, 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 tell, to tell stories, but without giving too much importance to, to, to them. It was uh, an amusement. What then did, did decide that now you had to write novel? There is no answer. Uh, a very provocative answer I, I give sometimes because I am disturbed by this question. It happens when you feel that you haven't to piss and you have to, to, to run to the toilet. <laughs> the, the real episode, I, I don't know how much it counts, but it happened that way. A friend of mine, a young lady, who was working for a small publisher, went once to, to, to me and said, we want to start a series of short uh, detection stories written not by writers, but by sociologists, politicians. Uh, do you want to do that? I said, no. First of all, because I am convinced uh, I am unable to write dialogues. It seems the dialogues are the best part of my thoughts. <laughs> Second, if I had to write a detection story, it would be 500 pages long and take place in a medieval monastery. And then she said, no, it's not uh, what I, I look at. Ciao, ciao, ciao. I went home and I started to write a list of names of monks. It means that probably there was something circulating in my belly without I was conscious of it. Otherwise, otherwise I, could, I could have given another answer. To, to, but it was unconscious. There was something. Third explanation. One is to peace. The other is eh? third at that point. I final, finally, since uh, some years, had my university chair, full professorship. I had published uh, 50 books. Uh, I was translated already in English, in French, and that. So I was at the point in your life in which either you, like Humbo, escaped to Africa to sell guns, or you escape uh, with the Cuban ballerina and abandon the family, or you write a novel to do something different. <laughs> the real surprise and the real pleasure was that uh, writing doesn't mean to take a pen and to trace uh, alphabetic uh, car. It's starting a research. For the name of the rose, the research was very short, no more than two years, because it was about Middle Ages and I had studied and written about So it was enough to open, uh, uh, to open an arm. Uh, 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 and I had the files and files uh, falling at my feet. And, uh, but with the pendulum, it took eight years. And for the other novel, six years per novel. And that 
is the fascinating aspect of, the, of telling a story, to create a world, to decide how our spaces, uh, characters. Uh, so it, except for the name of the rose, I repeat for the other, for at least two years I didn't write. I was creating a world in which my character then could move with ease. That is the most uh, fascinating part of, of the story, to, to stay six years in which nobody knows what you are doing, but everything you are doing, even to drink a coffee, can give you an idea uh, about, uh, about the story. Then the writing, when comes, is, is pretty felicitous. Well, okay, then you have moments in which you need to close everything in your drawer and to and to stay 15 days doing something else, okay, but that, that's natural. Uh, it was told by many, many, many writers. You have moment of crisis in which you don't know how to get out of a certain situation. At the time, I am usually helped by swimming, either in a swimming pool or in the sea. You swim and you, and you think, and when swimming, with your body very relaxed, you have a lot of new ideas. I always repeat, uh, it is not the author who writes the novel. The author posits some starting points that the novel writes himself by itself. You have to follow the logic of the characters. Uh, I didn't start this uh, story thinking of a journalist called Bragadocio. He, he, arri he arrived in the middle of the story and obliged me to follow him. I have, first of all, to create uh, a world. I have a lot of drawings in which, uh, for the name of the rose, I designed all the faces of the monks, which, which uh, were not so useful because then I changed it. But I, I needed to have points of... Uh, of reference uh, for, for, for the labyrinth of the library, I designed, uh, I don't know, 50, 60 different uh, labyrinths, uh, uh, studying all the existing labyrinths. For the island of the day before, I designed all the interior of the ship, very complicated with the staircase, the ladder there, there because I, I had to know how my character could move. But when the German publisher, you know, the, the Germans are always precise, and uh, wanted to reproduce the, the, the design on the book, I said, no, I had to know what happened. The reader has to be as, as confused as the character. First of all, for me, there is a radical difference between prose and poetry. In poetry, the words come first, and then what you have to say follows. Uh, there was the great Italian poet uh, Eugenio Montale, and uh, another poet uh, who had even a love affair with Montale wrote recently, uh, before her death, some anecdotal stories about Montale, who had disappeared after the Nobel Prize. And she remembered that one beautiful poem on Montale was speaking of certain flowers. I think were anemones, but doesn't matter. Flowers with a beautiful name. One day they were walking, and there were anemones there. And Montale said, oh, how beautiful what they are. Oh, you wrote an entire poem about them. I say, my poems are about words, not about things. It means that the poems of Montale are full of reference to flowers. He never saw those flowers. He was reacting to the words. The words started. With the prose, it is different. First, there is a world. A world. In this world, certain things happen, and your language has to follow the story. So I am a very, I am a chameleon. Uh, chameleon, the, the animal, that, because 
in the name of the rose, my style was the one of the medieval chronicle. Very simple, very elementary. In the island of the before, which takes place in the Baroque era, my, I did my best to, to, to imitate the Baroque uh, language, so I read many, many authors of that, uh, of the time. I paid an enormous attention not to use words that at that time were not, were not used. So then, after the novel, I cancelled a lot of words because I realized that they were posterior. Uh, so I had to substitute them with. Uh, so every story demands its its own language. Mm -hmm. I wrote a book called *The Lector in Fabula*, about uh, narrativity, in which I make an enormous radical distinction between the empirical reader and the model reader. The empirical reader is the, exist, the reader which exists. And so uh, Barbara Cartland, uh, or I don't know, the author of pornographic uh, novels or very elementary detection stories, looks at the at a pre-existing reader. I write for the housewife. I write for young people. I think that uh, serious authors, on the contrary, build up, construct their reader. The first of uh, my Italian publisher that was immediately enthusiastic of the name of the Rose, he said, uh, but he said, well, uh, the initial description of historical events uh, are too long. They said, no, I want to prepare the reader to face uh, a narrative situation, so he has to make a penitence. If it is unable to do, okay, go on. Go. <laughs> that, that's the exact opposite of, of Dan Brown, for instance. He, he doesn't do that, uh, even though he, some people say it's the same plot, more or less. Uh, Dan Brown writes for credulous uh, readers. Okay. Okay. But once I met him, what? he's one of my characters. Is one of the characters of the Foucault's Pendulum. The, the, the Brown and me, we read the same books, but he took them seriously. <laughs> On the contrary, I tried to give a grotesque <laughs> representation of those stories. He took them seriously, or he didn't, but he wanted the reader took them seriously. <laughs> I don't know if, if, if Dan Brown is a believer or an atheist, but he wants to produce believing. <laughs> I think that everybody writes something, hopes to become uh, Homer. But one knows that it is a, a sort of uh, imaginary projection. I can only give you a cue. When starting speaking with some friends about the fact that I had finished the novel, we said we should give it to Franco Maria Ricci, publisher, who was a very very aristocratic uh, publisher who made a collection of books directed by Jorge Luis Borges, but few few thousand copies. Okay, that's the first idea was that. So I wanted to give it to a, to a small publisher. I didn't want to give it to my normal publisher because I thought it was too easy, and he would have accepted it immediately. No, I wanted to be judged. But in the, the space of two weeks, I received two calls, one from Giulio Inaudi, the great of the publisher, another from the director of Mondadori, who said, we know we have written a novel. We take it without reading it. At that point, <laughs> I said, Nothing to do. I gave it to my normal publisher, who was enthusiastic, and said, ah, we can start with 30,000 copies. Said, You're crazy. Said, okay. Then. So then, step by step, the 30,000 became, became the 300,000. Uh, it was gradual. So it, it gave me time to adapt myself to this situation. No, it didn't change my life in this sense, because I was living pretty comfortably even before I wrote articles for the newspapers at my, my salary as a university professor. I was not poor. 
and I didn't need to, 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 to buy a yacht. Uh, uh, simply the success reduced my freedom. Because you cannot go to the theater for the opening because uh, you are besieged, you can. Uh, so I was obliged to live more privately with friends uh, and in the countryside. My old friend uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, he wrote a lot of beautiful novels, but people asked always him for 100 years of solitude. You are condemned. Uh, only some read, uh, authors can escape uh, this curse if their best novel comes at the end. But <laughs> if one a successful novel comes at the beginning, you are condemned to speak all of your, of your life of that one. <laughs> and it's okay with you? No, because I, for instance, I think that the best novel I wrote was The Pendulum and not The Name of the Rose, that uh, the, other, the, the other ones were... Uh, but, okay, I am, in this moment, before you arrived, I was reading a treatment uh, that uh, Italian television once made 10 episodes uh, out of The Name of the Rose. Uh, uh, you cannot escape it. No, you try to escape, but your publisher says, no, please, uh, do it. After the name of the rose, I start usually a, a book, not only a novel, is like a child. It took two years to, to grow it up, uh, to follow it. Uh, this is a case of, I am following my book, I cannot think of another of another one, two years, like, like a child. So after the second year, you start saying, ah, and if I had to, to write another novel, and uh, the first time I said, but I think that in the name of the rose, I have put everything, uh, there's nothing else I can tell. And suddenly, I was struck by two images. Well, there was the one of the pendulum that I saw at the age of 20 in Paris. And the other was the image of a boy playing the trumpet in a cemetery. That was an event that really happened to me. And I said, ah, the novel started with the pendulum and ending with the cemetery. Fine. What to put in between? It took me <laughs> the eight years to, to discover. But, at that moment, I realized that to write a novel meant to start from an image. In the name of the rose was the image of a monk being poisoned while reading a book. Uh, for the island of the day before was to discover that there were marvelous watches with the world time and the date, ah, uh, and, and so on, and, and so on. You start from for a poignant uh, image. I mean, me, probably another uh, author has another other procedure, I don't know, uh, it's not my, 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 my problem. But for me, it happened always like that. You start from the image and then, I repeat, the novel goes by itself. Has it been if you have time, if you don't want to do it immediately. Uh, I am a devotee of the great Indian proverb, sit on the banks of the river and wait. The corpse of your enemy will pass one day or another. The computer changed a lot. Uh, for instance, but I, uh, I consider a computer a very spiritual uh, engine because you can write at the speed of your thought. Sometimes you need the resistance of matter. So you would like to carve uh, what you think uh, on, a, on a stone. And sometimes you need the pen, uh, but usually with the computer, you, you follow the speed of, our, of your thought. Then you have all the time you, you, you need to correct, to cancel, to remake, to in this sense, uh, 
at least it helped me a, a lot. The name of the rose was not written uh, the computer because it, it didn't exist at that time. It was not in commerce, the personal computer. But immediately after I was helped, uh, I think, yes, a, a lot. That can increase your productivity because you are asked to write a lot of things and you recycle always the same article, changing the beginning and the end. Okay. And then it can uh, help your research, obviously. For instance, why this novel took me only one year? First, because part of the events were belonging to my personal memory. Second, because if you want uh, the, the autopsy of Mussolini, you find it immediately in internet. Uh, you have not to make uh, remote uh, research. Sometimes, on the contrary, you have to, to, to walk through libraries or to places. Places, for me, it's very important to visit the places. When I wrote The Island of the Day Before, I spent uh, one month but in the southern uh, islands. Uh, otherwise, I couldn't have described the, the colors. Uh, uh, so visiting place, and which is a part of the research. I always say, if, uh, in a novel, I have to write, uh, once arrived at the station of Lyon, I step down from the train to buy a newspaper, I have to know if there is a kiosk, if there is a newsstand uh, uh, close to the train, I have to go to Lyon, even though the, the episode is not so important for, for the story. I, I, I have to know the number of uh, steps in a staircase in order to make my character to climb up. Being a philosopher and a semiotician studying so science and communication, I know how is it difficult to establish if something is true. While it is less difficult to establish that something is false. So passing to the study of fakes and, and false, it's easier to understand what, what can be probably true. And that's why I was always fascinated by, by those things. I am a rare books collector too. And my collection concerns only uh, fake books, books that say the contrary. Of the, so I, I don't have Galileo Galilei, but I have Ptolemy because it was wrong about the movement of, of the Earth. <laughs> All together in different places, they should be about 50,000. Here, when I arrived uh, 25 years ago, they were 30,000, but since uh, Many of them, and I think, I have no more time to count them, but I think there are 35,000, 35,000. Do you try to read a lot, or? Another provocative way to answer such a question is, I don't read, I write. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have to take into account that uh, one has, by age, has worked uh, as a university professor, uh, sometimes is able to understand what the book says after the first 10 pages. And you, you, you know if you have to, to go on or if it is enough. So you are helped also by your experience in, in reading. There is a cursory reading, not the quick reading of which uh, once uh, Woody Allen said, I am using the quick reading, I read the War, War and Peace, it speaks of Russia. <laughs> they are my books, translations oh. and wow. from there to okay. and they are books on me. About you, yes. Okay. <laughs>